janefinch.com. So I want to uh, shift over to uh, work with my uh, visitors tonight, my friends. And we have a group tonight. So we have uh, to my left here is Blackest Ninja. Blackest Ninja. What's up, what's up, what's up? Yeah, right. <laughs> Joanna Burt, or actually, sorry. Simmons. Simmons. Yes, yes. Let me get that in my head. Paul Nguyen. So the three of them are on the other side of the uh, control room, and uh, we're going to have a good conversation tonight about our topic. How do we move from adversaries to understanding? So welcome, everyone. Mm-hmm. So starting with you, Paul, how about you share some information about uh, your professional background? Sure. Uh, it's nice to be here. Thanks for having us, Greg. Yes, my name is Paul Nguyen, and I was born here in uh, Toronto. I, I live and uh, grew up in the Jane Finch area. My background is uh, I went to York University, and I took a film program there. And shortly thereafter, um, I did a few documentaries on air uh, with CBC and a few other broadcasters. <laughs> and then uh, I, I, uh, I, you know, I started up a website called janefinch.com in 2004, and it kind of by accident just to showcase the area in a positive way, and it grew from there. And uh, so my background is, uh, you know, in uh, filmmaking and communications. And uh, through my website, I've been able to meet all kinds of people. And that's how I became friends with uh, Blackest Ninja and uh, Joanna as well. So I'm very fortunate to meet people that I normally would not have the opportunity to meet. And as a, you know, pretty shy, introverted guy, so the website was a great outlet for me to express myself. So I use it to help others uh, express themselves in the community. All right. Okay. How about uh, you, Joanna? Hi, uh, Ani. Uh, Joanna Dindishi Kwe Dishnakasan. So my name is Joanna Dindishi Kwe, uh, Blue Jay Woman and Simmons. Um, I am an opera singer, Canadian opera singer, and I just finished my studies at the Glen Gold School of Music at the Royal Conservatory of Music. And um, I was also uh, singing with the Canadian Opera Company as well as Opera de Quebec and... Uh, the National Arts Center um, as the lead Sarah Riel in the Louis Riel Opera. And I advocate largely for my indigenous community. And yeah, so I'm a voice for my people. For my people. All right. <laughs> okay. And the uh, not, last but not least. Not least. Not least. Blackest Ninja. Yeah, what's up? I really appreciate the opportunity you gave me coming out here. Um, I'm a musician, artist, actor. Man with many hats. When you're coming from Jane and Finch, you got to be able to, you know, move on your feet like a ninja do. But um, <laughs> I've been doing music for a long time now, since I was like six years old. I used to break dance and then went to, at 12 years old, start, did recorded my first song. And then my first video I ever recorded was in 2005. And Paul filmed it, was Hustle On. Um, I did my first album in 2009. It's on Google, iTunes, all that good stuff. Called Voice of Jane and Finch, Black as Ninja. A lot of shows, a lot of documentaries, and all that good stuff. And I currently have some projects that we're working on with right now, but we have a lot of time to talk about that. A lot of time. Yeah, for sure. Or, uh, or approximately, yeah. Approximately. yeah. Approximately. <laughs> you know it's going to go by pretty fast. And then you're going to say, hey, don't we have more time? You know what I'm saying? Can we take the next, next show time. after this, the ta- <laughs> next time slot? Yeah. Our friend uh, Mario has the Italian music after this, so... Ooh. So uh, how does your professional work connect with your personal lived experiences? Like, how did you gravitate to where you are? Like, was the contribution in somewhere? Um, I think that it's my professional work is just a natural work. I don't think of it as work. I think it's a part of my personality and who I am. So it's real easy to, um, at least for me, to do what I do, music and whatever. But um, I also think it's also a tool to... um, bring my community together and um, help them see a more positive outlook and way of life than to what the media represents. And, you know, we have one in two people that may that may go the wayward way, right? So I, I, I think that me and my artistry help kind of guide those people into a, you know, positive. I'm not a saint, mind you, but I try my best, right? Well, it's not like one person is supposed to represent the whole community. And because one person may do something that's, you know... Definitely. It, that should not swipe the whole community in any way. I think that that, that that is what should be 
going on. But um, in the real world we live in, we're all brushed into one corner and, you know, one bad apple spoils the bunch, right? People are, you know, quick to make judgment Definitely. and block us and put us in these little compartments. Mm-hmm. It's easy for people to organize their lives that way. How about yourself, Joanna? Well, um, I come from a small town and a family of very little means, so I have never fit in the opera world, ever. I was very, I was not treated very nicely in the school that I, I went to. I was just seen as the poor native girl with uh, big dreams, was never going to get there. But um, I finally made it because I was picked up by uh, one of the, one of uh, North America's best directors, Peter Hinton, and I am, you know, there's not very, very many First Nations opera singers at all. There's a handful of us. I am the only First Nation soprano in Canada. How, um, how did you gravitate towards uh, opera, anyways? <laughs> oh, there's really no story behind that other than I was good at it. <laughs> it was the only way out of Lindsay. I just uh, auditioned for the, the the music program at the Glen Gold School when I was about uh, 18, and I got in. And I was like, ah, I don't really, like, I, you know, I don't listen to opera. I don't think it's that great. I don't listen to it in my spare time, no. <laughs> but I can sing it pretty damn well, yeah. so. There's obviously some something more core and substantial I like. I don't like watching it. I like singing it. I like to be in on the mo- stage in the moment, in the moment. Yeah. yes. Yeah. It's, it's a wonderful feeling. And it's great being on stage. So, okay, Paul, how did you, you know, what, how did your earlier years contribute in some way to where you're at now? Well, you know, growing up as a as a small kid in Jane Finch, uh, you're not really aware of like the outside perceptions because we're not reading the news, paying attention to the media. But once you're older and you make friends from you know different parts of the city, they kind of tell you, they inform you that you know you're from a community that has like some unique challenges mm-hmm. uh, to put it bluntly <laughs> yeah um or and, a reframe really yes and um so a lot of people tell you that you're different you're you're lesser and then you feel like oh it does start to impact your social understanding your self-confidence you feel like yeah you know i'm not as good uh, i'm coming from a poor neighborhood you know my friends are not that great they're not smart or they're not this or that and that's not what i felt because growing up there I, I have a lot of talented friends people doing you know really different things not just rap or basketball i mean those are the typical things that come to mind but people are doing all kinds of things so what i wanted to do is create a website and kind of showcase what the true jane and finch is like you know through my eyes and through the eyes of the people on the ground because we've had our stories been told by the mainstream media and we we were never the our own authors of our own voice so through the website we have guys like blackus and other people working together and you know just different colors you know yellow black brown green blue everything Mm -hmm. people working together and showing that you know we we're stronger together we have all these different you know cultural differences but that makes us unique and it makes us uh stronger so you know the website is just there to to promote the real voice of the community and to get the outside people like the public and the outside society to see that jane finch is actually a really it's a hotbed of talent there's a lot of uh diversity and culture there and it's a great place it's a richness of wealth that's untapped in some way definitely and you know, it's you're trying to counteract some of the quote media profile that has a per- particular perspective of the community. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm not also. It's not. I'm not trying to make it like a propaganda site, and no. we don't just promote. Oh, this is like all you know, rainbows and care bears. <laughs> you know, my website. We deal with a lot of issues, and we just present it accurately with no like bias or anything like yeah that. we don't varnish it or anything we just present like the reality and it's up to the the viewer or the reader to make their own judgments and determinations of how they feel about the neighborhood and if they feel like it's worth visiting and getting to know people there then that's what we encourage people to do Definitely. okay we're going to take our first break and when we come back you're gonna we'll have more conversation about our conversation tonight our topic you're listening to mediation station on chha sixteen ten a.m Voces Latinas. Welcome back to Mediation Station on CHHA, 1610 AM. And we're uh, having a conversation tonight about uh, how do we move from adversaries to understandings. So for each of you, what does it mean to you as to how you are identified or seen by others? Um, what does it mean to me how I'm seen by others, really? Yeah. And truly, I'm a, 
I got a lot of thick skin, and I really, I got thick skin, so I really, I really don't care how others see me. But, re- but I, um, I understand the basis of your question in regards to society and stuff. Um, how I, I can't, I can't force anybody, or I can't change anybody's opinion on what they have of me when they see me. But I can, um, I can maybe make them know what kind of person I am if they interact with me, and they can realize that whatever stereotype or whatever illusion that they have of the blackest ninja or the Jana Finch rapper is hopefully not what they're they're thinking of. Do you think people make uh, assumptions about him? Oh, for sure, definitely. They always make assumptions, like how Paul said. You know, you tell somebody you're from um, the community, they assume that you're like this and you're you do the certain things and stuff and again you can't really change anybody's th- um thoughts about that but i what i would do or what i do or what i've done is um just know a lot about my community know a lot about my history know a lot about myself so i can combat those kind of um stereotypes right um it's unfortunate a lot of people don't take the time to do that so they're just react off of emotion and they may have some little bit harsher words to say to somebody that that may uh, judge them or assume that they're a, a certain way but um i think that the one way we can change that is information and it, i think it is changing uh, we're in an information age we're in a time where we have access to everything at the tip of our fingers and if there's a if there's a somebody has an argument you can Google it or Yahoo it or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Somebody has a quote or whatever. So I think nowadays um, the face of of people trying to basically stereotype you for what you are or where you came from is slowly deteriorating. At, at it's not it's not going as fast enough, but I think it's not not as bad. But and, and at the same time, you know, there's people watching the news and may have a different opinion on that. That oh they're saying it's oh, it's the worst than it was before right but me personally I don't think it's it's as bad as um it's as bad as it was before okay yeah how do you feel uh well when people first see me um I'm I'm a mix of German and First Nations so you can't really tell that I'm First Nations from first glance so people usually think I'm Italian or something but when they find out that I am First Nations and status First Nations. I usually get, oh, uh, you don't pay taxes. I'm like, well, no, I don't. But <laughs> Or you get a lot of free handouts from the government. Or uh, you get free housing. Uh, you get all this stuff. I'm like, no, no, I don't. We actually get treated pretty poorly. Um, there was one time when I was in um, Thunder Bay, because uh, I work for the Métis Nation Ontario. Um so we went to Thunder Bay, and most of the Métis people, uh, they look white. And I'm the only First Nations out of all of them. And they told me if I went walking around in, in Thunder Bay, then I would have been killed or raped because I look native, native enough. So it's either, it depends on where you are as a First Nations person. You're either too native or you're not native enough. And it's, it's like, why can't I just be who I am? Yeah, and right. And I constantly have to be proving myself, being like, yes, I am First Nations, but why do I have to do that? But that that's how it is in the First Nations community. Yeah, yeah. and I mean, the broader society is always projecting onto others exactly what they believe to what be they think the truth. should look like. Yeah, for mm-hmm. yourself or for Blackus or for Paul. Yeah. That, you know, it's through their lens. And yeah. we've had this conversation on here before about identity. Exactly. Who's responsible for how we identify mm-hmm. is it others or ourselves yeah well i i, I guess as an asian guy i can't complain <laughs> versus joanna's or blackest's experience and to be honest you know um it's not um easy being an asian person in an asian body but it's far more difficult i would imagine just hearing their stories of my friends beside me i mean the things i have to face are just you know, like Joanna mentioned, it's like always trying to prove yourself. You know, in a previous workplace, we would have a meeting, and it's mostly like white people. Mm. And uh, we'd be discussing a certain project, and I, I felt like I had the most experience, but people kind of just ignored me. Like I was invisible. Yeah. 
even the eye contact in the room, no one was making eye contact with me, and they're just talking amongst themselves. And right. I felt like I do, I do have some value. I'm just a human being. I'm an employee here at this, this, uh, this place, but I felt like invisible. So I think uh, you know, just a lot of the people of uh, people of color can understand and relate to that. That we always constantly have to prove ourselves. We have to work maybe ten times as hard just to get the, the same level of success. And uh, that's what I uh, really, you know, try to fight against. And I always, um, you know, the, some of the young people I work with through my website, I always encourage them that, you know, your color or your background is a strength. Don't be ashamed of it. Don't be embarrassed about it. You can use it as a strength and use it towards your advantage. And that's a unique perspective that you have to offer towards any project. So, you know, at the website, we're just trying to promote diverse voices. And, you know, I'm very happy that just sitting here with, in this panel, you see, like, just different colors and different experiences. And, you know, that's what we're about. Including different points of view. Mm-hmm. I mean, even within whatever community, there's a range of different perspectives within the same communities. Definitely, definitely. So, you know, just because, as we talked off air, I think, before, that uh, one person doesn't make a community. Mm-hmm. You know, if they go off a certain path or whatever, exactly. that everybody of the community is not from the same doesn't do doesn't do the same things that that person did or experienced or might have going to do whatever the case may be and um yeah to just to touch on what um Paul said you know you can when you're the victim of a of a perception and of a ideology there's nothing really you can do but to um get ready to take the punches right mm. you you got to just rope a dope with it and you, we've been doing it, at least I've been doing it so long that I expect the punches. So before you even, uh, if I, when I step in a room full of white people and, or, and I have to, like he said, do a presentation or um, I have to get an interview or something, I automatically know, regardless if I may be right or wrong, they're seeing me in a certain way just because of the situation that I've been through countless times in my life. And I prepare myself. Maybe I might have to do something to make them laugh. Maybe I might have to do something to make them realize that I'm more smarter than I look. Whatever the case I have to do, the, the situation that I've been growing up with, make that, that's my defense mechanism. So I think a lot of people have defense mechanisms some of them are subtle and suppressive and some of them are emotional and aggressive um you know a lot of people may tend to make their emotions run with them and rebuttal a situation in a negative way and end up being the you know the victim in the in the systematic way and there's some people that do it in a in a subtle way and they're like they finesse it in a in a way where the guy is going to be like he, he he feels bad or they feel bad of what they were insinuating. So I think it's um I think it's just the people that are the victims dealing with it and I think this is a time where the people that are instigating it should be more or at least are are being more aware because now we're having not black people saying what white people are doing to black people you're having asian people and native people and mm-hmm. saying what they're doing to and you have other people saying what other people are doing so everybody's advocating for everybody so I think it's um, yeah. I, th- I think it's 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 changing, but it's still there. I think it'd always be, still be there, right? Yeah. So there's a lot, you know, to go with the journey. Mm-hmm. And I mean, this Truth is and the reconciliation, <laughs> <laughs> reparation, repartiation. Give it back. <laughs> You're gonna do. Uh, uh, you know who knows? I, if whatever the vibe takes, whatever the vibe. I'm here on live on the radio, so. <laughs> No and beeps. we go with the flow, and I appreciate it. We go with the flow. We go with the flow. We go with yeah. The flow. Continue that. So in terms of uh, <laughs> how do people, and you mentioned some of this, how do people interact and communicate with you based on your physical presence? Um, like you mentioned about coming into uh, the room, but in Joanna. Okay. Uh, sorry, I blanked out there. <laughs> so in terms of your public perception, mm. how you look, what you yes. say. Do you think, how do people interact with you or communicate with you? Do you think that's different from if they saw you in a different light? Depends on what I'm wearing, to be honest, because if I'm, if I'm looking native, 
then they're going to be asking ridiculous questions and about... Can I, can I ask, just because the, the listener can't yes. visualize you, Yes. what does a native look like? Okay, so um, uh, maybe like uh, braids with buckskin or a shirt that says that I'm native, you know, something that's like a dead giveaway. My, my collars, I wear a lot of uh, deer bone collars. Or if I'm wearing a dead animal on me, for instance, mm-hmm. <laughs> like today, like a coyote, like a, a coyote. dead coyote. <laughs> then people will will ask uh, questions about um, my like. What's my, that about? Or my what does spirituality, that mean? Yeah. like, or like, why are you wearing that? Does that mean something? Oh, can I touch your hair? I'm going to touch your hair anyways. Like, let me touch your hair. So when I'm wearing braids, like, there's certain things for us as First Nations people, like that that's sacred and not supposed to be touched because that's just not acceptable. Yeah. Um, for instance, um, we would also wear medicine packs around our necks, which is usually buckskin. And a lot of people, when I wear that, because it's it's a beautiful um, pouch, and they come up to me and they touch it, and I'm like, whoa, no, hmm. no. Because um, in our culture, we believe that that holds all of our spirit and who we are, especially with our hair as well, when it's done in braids. No one can braid our hair but us. So there, no one knows, like, really, they will not educate themselves about the culture of the First Nations people. It's very deep. It's thousands of years old and there's no book you know it's it's passed down from generation to generation and it's not like you know christianity where they have the bible no 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 we learn from our elders we learn from our people Mm -hmm. and i find that a lot of white people are too ignorant to learn they're just like oh pocahontas oh you look like pocahontas that's what i get a lot as well i get pocahontas too (laughs) um which is horrible (laughs) So that's when I'm in regalia. If I'm in regalia, I'm walking downtown. Oh, hi, Pocahati. I'm like, wow. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, I mean... And then also as a First Nations woman, I do get tokenized. What do you, um, what do you mean? Well, I I don't like to say this like for, because the Canadian Opera Company, like I believe, well, half, more than half is to do with talent. But then the other is the fact that I'm First Nations and they can say we hired a First Nations in this production oh, about sure. a First Nations man. Definitely. If they did not hire First Nations, they would have been up the creek without a paddle. That is 100% sure. So they needed to do that. If they did not have First Nations represent, uh, representation in this production this year, there would have been, like, shit would have hit the fan hard. Yeah. Uh-huh. So <laughs> sometimes I feel that um just to touch on that. I feel that a lot of times like I may get a job or I may be in a position because I'm a a, a black guy, a black man and they they need that. And it's and you know, it's um it's a status quo or whatever and it, cuz it's like what can you do? And you, what how can you prove it? You know what I'm saying? Like so a person that's never experienced racism or experienced prejudice can say it doesn't exist because they've never experienced it they just heard about it mm-hmm. but the victim of it all the time is going to be like obviously that guy's racist obviously that was a or a, a woman can say oh that's a sexist thing whatever the case whatever the ism is it's like how do you prove it unless it's videotaped or unless it's well, you're not giving any credibility that you lived that experience yeah. or you experienced that experience. Exactly. It's like it's like a fish tells you I'm wet all the time because I'm in the water. And you're like, no, you're not. You're a fish. Yeah, I don't believe you. Like, what are you talking about? Like, you know exactly what you're saying. Okay, so we got to take a, another break and we'll come back. We'll uh, talk more. You're listening to Mediation Station on CHHA 1610 AM, Voices Latina. All right. Blackus is taking some what, selfies or what Sel- do you call them? No, this is um, this is not a selfie. This is a live video, so I can remember <laughs> this moment for the rest of my life. How That's, can people access that? You know what? You can, thank you for helping me with that plug. That's great. <laughs> Blackus Ninja. You can Google that. That's B L A C U S N I N J A H. You can Google that and I I G that and all that good stuff. But oh, we doing it right. We doing it big right here with all these wonderful people. <laughs> so Paul, did you want to add anything to the previous uh, piece? Um, just about like being, um, you know, different. Um, you know, yes, I, I do play a certain expectation. You know, people expect the the friendly, smiley Asian who doesn't speak up and who doesn't challenge uh, maybe an injustice. 
And I think, yeah, maybe, you know, the perception is most Asian people are more quiet or docile. And that's why it's very important for me to express myself through my website. Maybe I don't have a loud voice. I'm not out there on a picket line with a, you know, bullhorn. But, you know, using the, the, the technology like the Internet to, you know, empower myself and empower the people that I know. And also, you know, when people see an Asian person, they automatically assume this Chinese guy. But I'm actually Vietnamese. And there's a difference between Chinese, Japanese, Vietnamese, Korean, Filipino. We're all different. Um, so I think it's very important to for other people to kind of like just learn about other people. And I try to do my research, too, because I don't know everything. And, you know, I just try to go and just meet people and attend their community, their their festivals and their cultures. And that's what we try to do at janefinch.com. When there's a different, you know, uh, event in the area, uh, we always try to cover it and put it on the website. So you see all different kind of cultures. And it's just like one place where you can just go to go online and then you can learn about different cultures at just one stop shop. So um, that's what we're trying to do. And we're going to continue doing that. Well, you know, I, I think that in order for people to learn of others and about, they have to want to do that. Mm -hmm. There has to be intention from the person to want to be curious and then ask questions about yeah. someone and not just fill in the blanks and say they know, they make their judgments. Mm -hmm. I, th I think um, people that make judgments and people that um, just want to go with the flow with the stereotypes that they're taught it's easier for them and it's comfortable for them because like real and truly racism and prejudice is a is an unintelligent um characteristic or ideology so somebody that doesn't like you because of the color of your skin or or um whatever reason just by your physical attributes are there you have to understand that they're kind of slow and we're not dissing them we're saying that their handicap or anything but i think there's maybe something in their brain that they cannot throw away their ego or whatever they've been taught all their life to just see what's right in front of them and um it's 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 disturbing with especially with the president um i'm going to talk about trump it's disturbing Don't because <laughs> a, man, a man in that um in that position yeah and He's supposed to be of um, a certain kind of level of maturity and intelligence and uh, empathy and all these kind of traits. And when he talks and his actions, it makes you it makes you even think like the legitimacy of preg of the presidency. Like mm, like I think anybody joke. could be a president right now. I didn't even think I could go to school. I could just probably have some money and pay some some people to do some stuff on Facebook. Whatever the case may be. But I, I'm back to what I'm saying is like people are comfortable being stupid. Ignorance is bliss. And this is more than a saying. It's, um, it's a lifestyle. Well, people have to challenge it, though. And uh, if it's not challenged... That's why we're here. It's, it stays there. I mean, so that's one of the... For tonight, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, P Paul brought this up as an opportunity, especially with the times that are going on mm -hmm. out south, though yes. also here. Definitely. Yes, it's definitely a problem here, for sure. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, this is a, a, another way to bring to light... For the larger public, mm -hmm. that hey, these are real people. We're all real people. We have our lived experiences, mm -hmm. and you know, as human beings, first paramount maybe mm -hmm. that we need to be respected and provided yes. uh, an equitable space for us to do our our thing. Yes, definitely. Uh, yeah, I, I totally agree. I think that's the right thing to do. But um, the powers that be and the right. people that are usually in, in control don't really think that's that's in the that's in the best interest. But you know, it, you know, confusion and chaos and and hatred and all these things are easier forms to control masses. So these these things are going to be at least I th I I would never think that the president would be this kind of person. I'm thinking this is more like a governor or mayor kind of guy that you know he's he's going to be that kind of mayor that kind. But this guy being the president and saying the things he's saying and behaving how he's behaving like I think he knows what he's doing. Like I don't think it's freestyle or off the top. I think he knows what he's doing. So and to me it looks like he's insinuating a certain kind of division, right? And he's like making the, all the racist people. So me, now we got like a lot of dumb people in one room. Oh. So you know what happens when you got dumb people in a room? It gets a lot of dumb things happen and dumb things are said, right? 
yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's to say with that? I mean, we can challenge it though. We don't need to let it go as the status quo and be the norm, and say, hey, that's acceptable, and that's part of the reason why you're here too, mm -hmm. to help to challenge some of these notions of uh, how people are feeling more empowered to speak up about these, you know, uh, ways of thinking that prejudice is okay, bias is okay. I'm okay to say these things now because there's somebody in a position of authority yep. mm -hmm. that now gives me credibility to be able to have that space. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. And you know what? These people are saying these things and they're doing these things and they're, they're thinking that... Um, because they're saying it louder, it, it's going to make more sense because they got a lot of people saying it. And the one thing that's never ever forgotten is history is going to be is written. History is going to be remembering, and we're all going to sit down and be like, "Yo, what was going on in 2017? <laughs> like, you guys had this guy, and so it's like, what can we do? What I think the only thing we can do is." Um, because you say we, if we, you're saying we should stand up and fight it, and when we stand up and fight, especially black people, this is the black perspective I'm telling you. Yeah, you, uh, of course, you got to speak for yourself. I got to speak for myself. Right. So when you, like, for example, all the stuff that is happening in the news across this, across the border, and the reason why I'm going to talk about across the border because this is just being infested with everything with us, right? And I, I think Martin Luther King said, you know, um, uh, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. So. So when you um, when you're seeing injustice and you're seeing black men and women and and children being killed and there's no nobody's um paying the price or paying the price to the pipe or nobody's is being is get, is getting um what they deserve for their actions and getting a slap on the wrist or whatever it's kind of discouraging. So what do you do? You take a knee like like the football player, and then everybody takes a knee, and then they say you're disrespectful. Then you, okay, you protest, you protest, and then they say, oh, my gosh, you guys are rioting. And then you write a letter, or you just stop working, and they say you're trying to disrupt society. So it's it's hard to, um, as being the victim, it's hard to, to really battle it. So what we tend to do is we tend to just live in our own bubble, live in our own world, and just just work with it. And I think that I think sometimes, well, that that's always a better thing because you know nobody's going to come and hurt you once you're in your own space. But I think sometimes that may get, be a little bit too comfortable, and it starts a lot a lot of separation as well, right? So it's like a it's it, we're standing on the, we're standing on some shaky ground right now. So for us to fight racist racism, like it, it sh you shouldn't be fighting it. Like it's a common sense thing, right? So like, but what can you do when somebody's so mad? Then they drive a car in a group of people standing up. Or somebody's so mad that they break a window out of a hotel and start shooting people for no reason. What can you do with that? So that it, it, it doesn't even become, uh, uh, it doesn't even become like a personal reason. It becomes like a disease, a sickness. So, well, so people who are racist, I'm um, basically saying, have a sickness that needs to be diagnosed. So there's no talking to somebody with a sickness. You need to diagnose that person. That's my perception. Joanna, any thoughts? Okay. <laughs> um, well, the thing is with, with First Nations, because what happened to mm. us, um, my people, it happened very recently. So the genocide, the cultural genocide was very recent. So when we, you know, we talk about like moving on and, you know, moving on from this and things like working together, um, <clears throat> my generation of um, First Nations, Indigenous uh, youth are, are gung-ho. We're like, okay, we're going to move on and we're going to try to go forward with the government and um, make good relations. Um, but we still have people who are very, very upset and rightfully so about the past. It's a snowball effect within our communities where it's alcoholism, drugs, what have you. But um, there's a lot of resentment in their hearts because of all that happened to them in the residential school system because the last residential school was closed down in 1990s 
which is very, very recent. Mm -hmm. People don't understand that. They say, well, just forget about it. It's in the past. Why don't you just move on? No, it can't. It can't work like that. And that's why with this truth and reconciliation, where's the truth in, in this? And where's, where's the, how are we even reconciling right now? Well, I mean, I mean, a lot of the circumstances have left a legacy that needs to be addressed. Yes. And that's part of maybe the struggle yes. from the older individuals. And then not only that, what we're dealing with in my communities, um, we're also dealing with the missing and murdered Indigenous women, which is not getting dealt with. And this is the gov partially the government's doing for not paying as much attention as they should. Where if it was a white girl who got killed, they would care. But if it's one of us, no, they don't care because we're disposable, I guess. But this is a huge problem, and it, it just hurts my heart. Mm -hmm. It's horrible. But I th Yeah, I think that um, uh, empathy, I said that a word earlier, is very, very important because, and it's a sign that, you, you know, you care uh, about the the next human being, yeah. And um, a lot of a lot of people that are say that they're not racist but have racist in actions lack empathy. Yeah. And it's it's it, it's evident right in front of you because you can see okay these people went through this these people are going through this right now we can see them going through this but I don't care and. The, how how do you reason with somebody like that? There's no reasoning with nothing. So so what what do you do? You uh, you got to go extreme. You know what I'm saying? So and I'm not I'm not um, advocating anything. I'm not saying that people should um, start anything violent or anything like that. But frustration, it's like you can only go so far. Well, I mean, people are human. Are human beings? They react. It's not always when they react, they deal with things in the most rational way. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's impacts and consequences from those actions. Mm -hmm. And then we have to deal with those as well. So it's easy to say in some way, yeah, we don't want to do this or we should do this. You mm -hmm. never know until you're in the moment yeah. and you're going through stuff and you're feeling stuff, you're affected by stuff of what you actually will do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For so, sure, for real, for real. So when we come back, we'll talk more. It'll be the last segment for yeah. tonight. And, you're you're uh, right. This is too short, man. We need to be here for like we need to talk another. You, me, I could, I can do it. And you know what? Let me. We, I'll tell you more about Blackest when we get back. You guys got to listen because we're gonna we're gonna get into it. All right. When we come back, you're listening to Mediation Station on CHHA 16:10 a.m. Voices Latinas. Welcome back to uh, the program tonight, Mediation Station. We're talking. How do we move from adversaries to understanding? And um, I want to throw out at you, what do you want people to learn about regarding those who are different by culture, identity, religion, or color of skin, for example? That it's, um, you know, it's just like food. If you're just eating the one kind of food, life's very limiting. Yeah, there's much more to life, much more beauty. And if you're cooking a meal and you have all kinds of different fruits, vegetables, different foods, it makes life beautiful. So if you want to enrich your life, enrich your understanding of your fellow human beings, getting to know different cultures and different people and their customs and their practices and their, their stories, it'll, it'll make your life more beautiful and your understanding better. That sounds and like a commercial. I love it. <laughs> so nice. Make your life more beautiful. <laughs> so, I mean... That's what we, tr what I try to do with my website at janefinch.com is to, you know, harness the, 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 the voices of everyone, put them together and showcase that to the greater public. And it's really important because, you know, we do have like just the press, the mainstream press is just always having a certain angle about the Jane Finch community. Mm -hmm. Now it's very important to empower the single individual at the community, the grassroots level. And when we do that, we get, you know, a diversity in voices, a diversity of perspectives, and it enriches the whole community. So, you know, that's why we're having people like Blackest Ninja, Joanna here. They all have different, very special um, experiences, and, it's, and that's why it's very important to expose it to the greater world out there. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. 
What was the question again? I just like I just the commercial just made me want to give some money to UNICEF yeah. or something like that. It was crazy. And you can. That's an <laughs> option I, I, after I the think, program. But I think everybody needs to give some money to UNICEF and to Puerto Rico and to um, the states <laughs> right now. That's I just felt like that. And it's not a joke. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Thank no problem. What do you want people to learn about regarding those who are different by culture, ethnicity, religion, color of skin, for example? Um, like what you know, people listening, who people who are not from the same communities. I think, you know what? I think that a lot of people who are not from the same communities, especially younger people, I don't think that, it, that that's a question that, like, I think it's a part of their life. I think they know that they learn from people regardless everywhere, anywhere they go. So, but again. Yeah, but there's a lot of people who just don't get that I, at the same time. Wh- what can you do? Well, that's the question. I don't know what to do. I don't think I'm here to convince you not to get it. You know, no, don't say, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm saying Blackus is advocating suicide. No, I'm not. What I'm saying, though, for real, though, I'm not here to change your mind. If you want to, if you're in a, a room and you have the opportunity to open your eyes and see everything in the room, and you say, no, I don't want to open my eyes and see, I want to be blindfolded. And when it's time to get out of the room, you're walking around in the wall. It's nobody's fault but yourself. So I think that uh, going back to it, it, it takes that people just got to, if you're smart and you're, you're somewhat smart, I mean, you can use an iPhone, you can use a cell phone. I think it's, it, shouldn't be, it shouldn't be hard for you to want to learn about another person because you, like, like um, Paul said, I mean, you're, you're used to just eating one food. You're going to get full, I guess. But why wouldn't you want to have the buffet <laughs> and have everything, and you'll still get full, but at least you know you have a, your taste buds, your, the emotion, everything. You get everything. You, you, you become a fuller human being if you become a human being. Uh, is it, or you see life through a lens of that kind of. Like we're all so humans, deep. right? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So that was deep. That was so deep. Uh, you know what? Hold on. Before you even start, Blackest Ninja is an acronym, you know. It means... Um, <laughs> what does it mean? It means um, it means black, lethal, and conscious, under slavery, never ignorant, never humble, never ignorant, never judging, always humble. And um, it's a basically what I represent, right? So it's not just a name. It's pain. It's... Um, it's a, it's a, it's emotion. It's there's, there's a purpose for it. It's obviously. a purpose for it. So, like what she was saying now, that's what that that's what everybody should be. Everybody should be a blackest ninja, blessed, lethal, and conscious under slavery. Never ignorant, never judging, always humble. You come with that m- mindset, you're not gonna be thinking like, yo, I don't like that guy because um, of how his hair looks. I don't like that girl because she has a coyote carcass on hey. her. <laughs> Well, people make assumptions. Watch it. Yeah, and, and but it's a it's a spiritual thing with her with with her coyote carcass, you know, as opposed to somebody who has a fur coat or something like that. So it's like you need to be. Everybody needs to be blackest ninja. Google me, please. Thanks. <laughs> so we we uh, have a, just a few minutes left for tonight. What message would you like the listener and the public to better know about our conversation and understand from it? Um. Just please educate yourself. If you know you have questions, or if you have any any questions about certain cultures, particularly, I'm going to advocate for First Nations. Um, go speak to an elder. Go go speak. Go go to a powwow. Go to whatever. You know, don't just make assumptions about us. As like you know, we're we're not all alcoholics. We're not not all drug addicts. In fact, I'm an opera singer. So there you go. There you go. <laughs> can you can you just do a few? Bars, <laughs> I'm actually sick right now. <laughs> Sorry to put uh, you on the spot. Oh, I'll do. I'll do. Spot. I'll do. I got <laughs> what, what? We'll do some food broad racism. Yo, I freestyle about racists. They just racist. That's running racist. Ain't nobody winning. I'm coming from the ghetto, and they say that I'm sinning, but ain't nothing changed. It's always been the same from the beginning. Black is ninja. Black is sneezy. Made it look so easy. I used to flip that work like your Jeezy. Now I'm spitting realness so people listen and believe me. I can tell you about the streets. It's so greasy. Back to the matter at hand. The master plan is to make everybody come together. Damn, they trying to put me in the can because I'm... Oh, damn. Yo. I'm here all day, man. All day, man. <laughs> fam, fam, I'm here, man. I'm here, fam. Anything you want to add, uh, Joanna? Singing wise? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There we go. We got a few bars out of it. Oh, 
There you go. Oh, <laughs> so, oh, oh do you sing? I have no talent. I'm just the guy oh, behind the on. internet. Uh, who's talented? <laughs> Yeah, well, but yeah, love each other, love, love every culture, and that's my love is the only solution. Love is the solution mm. to start a revolution. Yo, mm. we just just bring the coquette drum in here, and we just have a oh. a real powwow. Is that? Thank you. you know, I, oh, I, I know you got. I'm out here. I'm out here all day, all day. <laughs> so, any suggestions in addition as to how people can make themselves better informed? about what we talked about well i mean that's why i you know i set up a website i mean the information is there and information is power so people are you know do have the capability you know especially these days you know everyone has a uh, you know a smartphone so it's very easy to access information it's up to you and to go beyond that you know i'm not trying to preach to anyone um but you know if you're having children you want them to be successful in school in the career and in business it's really beneficial you know, to understand different cultures, different, di- you know, the diversity, and it'll help you through, you know, your working career, your life. And so that's, you know, if people don't have an inclination to learn about other cultures, this would be a good one for you, to, you know, for your children, for yourself to, you know, to be successful. And it's uh, very important to understand each other because that way we can work uh, better together. Definitely. And, mm. and barriers, um, like even if, for example, a dam, a dam it can only hold the water for so long until... It gets over flooded. So you dividing yourself, thinking that you're going to be divided forever, will, regardless if you're angry for a very long time and you have a lot of money, you're not going to be divided forever because the barriers are going to overflow because the youth and the future is definitely optimistic. It's not it's not dreary or or down or scary. It's not um, the Terminator that's what's going to happen because everybody's united right now on a united front. Okay, so I want to really thank all of you for having this conversation tonight. It's very informative and helpful, and I appreciate you taking the time to visit. Thank you for having us. C-H-H-A 1610 AM. Yes, Latinas, Vosa Latinas. Is that how I say it? Am I good? Voces. Voces Latinas. Voces Latinas. Excellent. Tranquilo, tranquilo, tranquilo. All right. Ah. Thanks very much for... uh, being with us, and uh, we got to say goodnight. See you soon.